Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. A review video is a new style for me. When Banggood asked me if I was interested in doing a review just when I was setting up the new Chinese lathe, it seemed like a perfect opportunity to test out a new tool post. Full disclosure, Banggood have sent me this tool post and holders completely free of charge to do with what I want. Let's take a look at what they sent me. The tool post is a matchy fit branded cuneiform gib style quick change tool post. This is a tool post which allows you to switch tools very quickly that uses a tapered gib to lock the tool holder into place. One of the most important features of a quick change tool post is that it ensures each tool is the correct height, or at least the same height that it was last time it was fitted. The gib is operated using this handle on top, which is able to tighten and loosen the two gibs, one on each usable face of the tool post. The rest of the boxes contain various styles of tool holder. The first is a conventional tool holder for rectangular section lathe tools, though it also has the groove allowing it to hold round boring bars. The next is a similar conventional holder without the groove, all familiar to most lathe users so far. The third is a dedicated knurling tool with space for a short regular tool at the back. The fourth is a little more unusual. It's bored with a Morse taper so it can be used to hold any Morse taper tooling. The most obvious reason this would be useful would be to hold a chuck on a Morse taper arbor, allowing the chuck to be finely positioned with a lot more freedom than using the tailstock. Finally, there's a dedicated parting blade holder, which is pretty useful as parting is very sensitive to any lack of rigidity. These tool holders are sold separately, but Banggood sent me this set together for the review. Let's see how easily I can fit this to the Chinese mini lathe. The tool post includes a 10mm stud for installation and a square plate which can be adapted to make a nut required to fit it to some types of lathe. I don't need the plate for now, so I'll remove it and put it to one side. The lathe was delivered with this fixed height tool post fitted to the compound. This style of tool post is rigid, but requires shims to adjust the tool height and is very slow to change tools beyond the four that can be installed at the same time. It's fitted on a very similar 10mm stud, so the match fit tool post drops right into place, but unfortunately the stud is a little too short, so I'll need to replace it with the stud that came with the tool post. The stud is firmly screwed in and there's nothing for a wrench to hold on to, so I had to use a pair of nuts locked together to remove it. The new stud is unsurprisingly exactly the right length and the tool post fits well. To make it even easier to adjust and lock, I swapped out the new nut for the lever nut which came with the original tool post. With the tool post installed, I could try out the quick change mechanism. The 
shoulders drop easily into place can be tightened quickly and feel reassuringly rigid once they're locked into position. Of course the only real test will be doing some actual cutting on the lathe. One of the most important features of a quick change tool post is being able to quickly and repeatedly set the height of the tool. So let's see how easy it is to get the tool height right. I start out by setting it roughly by eye. I aim to get the height slightly below the centre rather than above because it's easier to check and correct from below. I then do a few facing passes to see how close the tool is to centre height. The step pattern is because the carriage shifts slightly away from the chuck with each turn of the handwheel. It doesn't matter for this test, but for doing any real work I'm going to need a carriage lock. The circle left in the centre of the face can be used to work out exactly how far the tool is below height. To get the tool on centre I just need to raise it exactly half the diameter of this circle. It's tricky to do that exactly because the tool post shifts slightly as the gib is tightened. All tool posts I've ever worked with have this problem, so it's not unique to this one. That's much closer, but I'll make one more small adjustment. Let's see how close it is to the same height once it's been removed and replaced. To ensure the holder works correctly, I need to lock the height adjustment wheel into position. It's not an exact measure, but that looks extremely close to the same height that it was before. The only other tool post I've used on a mini lathe is the one manufactured by Proxon for the PD250E, so it makes sense to see how they compare. The first obvious difference is that the cuneiform gib design makes it much easier to operate more quickly than the locking screw on the Proxon. The second difference that struck me is that the Matchifit tool post ships with all the contact surfaces ground to a good finish. Some of the faces on the Proxon toolpost had a rough machine finish and I had to get the bottom face surface ground on a friend's grinder. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it, though the real test will come once the Chinese lathe has a bunch of problems sorted out and is ready for some real project work. The Matifoot toolpost looks a lot more robust than the aluminium toolposts available from a lot of cheap tool suppliers and I like the cuneiform gib mechanism which pulls the holders towards the post much more than piston designs which push the holders away. I'm pretty sure the tool post will find a permanent home on this lathe. My next video will be back to proper machining projects, so check back soon.